Welcome to the Navis Newscast for Thursday, February 28, 2019. I'm Donis Wilkinson Keynes. The first sitting of the Navis Island Assembly for 2019 took place today, Thursday, February 28. The members of the Assembly sat in chambers for the introduction and first reading of the bill shortly entitled Navis International Exempt Trust Ordinance 2019. A bill to repeal and replace the Nevis International Exempt Trust Ordinance, CAP 7.03 N bracket, with the Nevis International Trust Ordinance 2019, to make provisions for the law relating to international trust for the matters incidental thereto or connected therewith. The mover of the bill was the Honorable Mark Brantley, Premier and Minister of Finance in the Nevis Island Administration. The reason for us coming for first reading only today is to make this bill, shortly entitled the Nevis International Exempt Trust Ordinance 2019, available to the public and to the opposition for comment. This new ordinance will also seek to update and modernize the legislation in keeping with international trends and standards in the financial services industry. The government in exercising its prerogative in laying the bill for the first reading is seeking to allow and facilitate the widest possible public comment within the parliamentary legislative process. It's an example of good governance at work, Mr. President, something we promised. And the period between the first and the second reading, we hope to come back on a future occasion, will allow those interested, particularly those in the financial services industry, to review, consider the bill, consider the implications, and make their comments. As noted by the finance minister, this is a central piece of legislation for the island's financial services sector. Too often we hear from those directly affected by legislation that they didn't know, they didn't get an opportunity to consider, they weren't aware. And so I'm sending a clarion call this morning to say to those, particularly in the financial services sector, that this bill, shortly entitled the Nevis International Exempt Trust Ordinance 2019, is being laid in the House for first reading, and we're encouraging one and all to make their comments and to consider the implications of this very important bit of legislation. We look forward to those comments, to taking them on board, and for them to influence the final bill that we hope will be passed by this Honourable House. This morning's sitting also heard announcements from President of the Assembly, the Honourable Farrell Smithen, and statements by Ministers, the Honourable Spencer Brand, the Honourable Eric Evelyn, and the Honourable Alexis Jeffers, as well as Member of the Opposition, the Honourable Joseph Parry. The Department of Physical Planning, in its effort to educate homeowners, potential homeowners and contractors, is hosting a public awareness campaign on building guidelines. Marvin Hanley, Senior Building Inspector at the Department, told us about the requirements for the construction of residential, commercial and industrial buildings. First, you will get your approved plan from the Department of Physical Planning. But after you get your approved plan and you've got your loan approved by the bank, if you um, have to go to a bank. Then you would contractor you would you would have your contractor uh, request an inspection for the setting out, and that is one of the stages where some of the contractors do not call for inspection, and is very important. So you want to make sure that the builders, the owners, know that the stage of a const um, construction start with setting out the building. Mm -hmm. Setting out is the first one. Then we had footings and slabs before your concrete is poured, the structural frame and the roof like they run up the walls, um, lintels, wing beams, roof um, casing and attachment. We have plumbing and drains, electrical work. We also have other inspections such as the septic systems. Mm -hmm. We also have the special inspections of our mechanical installation, let's say AC units and so on, hot water heaters and so on. And then you have the final inspection. So those are the general stages of the building. And the some of the more important stages are the footing before the concrete is poured. In order to prevent cracking, the floor slab on grade should be reinforced with welded wire mesh or BRC, um, number 42. Um, the me this mesh should be located one inch from the top of the slab, and care must be taken during pouring to make sure that this location is maintained. Hanley also spoke about the penalty fee for persons who are not adhering to the building guidelines. Whenever a builder go on to the next stage without getting the appropriate 
inspection or requesting the necessary inspection, the penalty fine would be $300 on the builder. The other penalty fees that we have in the department is on the owner of the land or the person who put down the advertising sign in, that we, in those cases. But this particular one, the penalty fine can be $300 on the builder if they fail to request mm -hmm. and wait an inspection before pouring concrete. Hanley is encouraging all homeowners, potential homeowners and contractors who are seeking information on the building code of St. Kitts and Nevis and who have questions pertaining to the guidelines and requirements for building to contact the Department of Physical Planning at 469-5521 extension 6074. All media houses and members of the press corps are cordially invited to the second press conference for 2019, which will be hosted by Premier of Nevis, the Honorable Mark Brantley, on Friday, March 1st. The event will commence at 10 a.m. at the Cabinet Room on the second floor of the Social Security Building at Penny's Estate. At the press conference, Premier Brantley will provide an update on matters of national interest and the members of the press will have the opportunity to ask questions. The press conference will be broadcast live on Nevis Television and TV, Channel 99, NevisTVOnline.com, NTV Go App, NTV Facebook page and Nevis Newscast YouTube channel. Still to come? This evening, you the constables are the spotlight because you have exemplified what it means to be a professional police officer. We'll give you the details after this break. Thank you so much for our message. Everybody have a good time. We're enjoying ourselves and having fun. Love, passion, pride, Kodrama 45. The Caribbean's greatest summer line. We are alive from July 26th to August 6th. Welcome back. At a health expo coordinated at the St. Kitts Marriott Resort to coincide with the 30th intersessional meeting of the Heads of Government of CARICOM, the St. Kitts and the Nevis Marijuana Commission mounted a booth to highlight its work. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Hazel Laws is the Chair of the Marijuana Commission. Actually, the Commission, we've been working for over a year. Uh, we conducted a number of consultative meetings, town hall meetings, about over a dozen town hall meetings and about eight focus group discussions. We even did, uh, conducted a prevalence of use survey and based on the information that the people gave to us, we were able to complete our final report and uh, develop some appropriate or relevant recommendations. On Wednesday, February 20th, the Prime Minister of St. Kitts and the Nevis, the Honorable Dr. Timothy Harris, announced those 13 recommendations during a sitting of the National Assembly. As noted by Dr. Laws, what was important was the people's input. Almost two-thirds, uh, or over 60% of the respondents from the survey said that there should be legislative change. Thus, the recommendation. All right, a bigger proportion said that they preferred decriminalization Criminalization versus legalization and so that's why we recommended uh, decriminalization uh, a bigger percentage or proportion of the people said they wanted decriminalization for medicinal purposes thus the recommendation and so uh, the recommendations were based on what the people said they wanted uh, one of the recommendations speaks to the need for a massive uh, campaign, education campaign regarding cannabis and I think I heard cabinet say that they would want the commission to help facilitate this massive education campaign. The St. Kitts and the Nevis National Marijuana Commission is comprised of members who represent the health and the medical profession, police, clergy, Rastafari community, legal profession, social services, youth, and finance. 
The Strategic Planning Group of the Royal St. Christopher and the Navy's Police Force hosted a Constable's Awards a Ceremony and a Dinner at the Occasions Entertainment Arcade on Saturday, February 23rd. Premier of Navy C. Honorable Mark Brantley, in delivering remarks, congratulated the constables and offered them some words of advice. This evening, you, the constables, are the spotlight because you have exemplified what it means to be a professional police officer. You have demonstrated that you are reliable, competent, hardworking, intelligent, and above all, dedicated to protecting and serving all members of our society. When you leave tonight's event and return to your daily duties, I urge you to abide by the golden rule to always treat those you are called to assist as you would wish to be treated. Treat your subjects and the people of St. Kitts and Nevis that you serve with dignity and offer them the same protection you wish for your own family. Secondly, be a person of good character. Seek to live a life of integrity and encourage it in others. Earn the trust of your peers and the community. Build a partnership with the community you serve and build a reputation of integrity and competence. Premier Brantley also pledged the support of the Nevis Island Administration to the Royal St. Christopher and the Nevis Police Force. As a government, the Nevis Island Administration will work harder and seek to invest more to ensure that our communities are safe and that our crime fighting and prevention capabilities are strengthened and enhanced. I once again take this opportunity to pledge that we will tackle every situation involving crime and criminals with the level of aggression and commitment required for us to triumph. However, for us to triumph, each of us must play our part in crime solving. Criminals and criminality can only be defeated through a partnership between the police and the community. The police and the citizens they serve must realize that their combined efforts are far greater than the sum of their individual parts. Constable Carl Gordon of the Criminal Investigations Unit was named Constable of the Year. That's how we end this edition of the New Business Cast. On behalf of all of us here at the Department of Information, thank you for viewing.